All right, good evening, everybody. We are so excited that you are joining us for the uh, Regional Admissions Counselors of California Virtual College Fair. My name is James. I'll be facilitating um, for this session this evening. So just a few housekeeping items before we get started. First thing to take note of is that you can ask questions utilizing the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Uh, one piece of advice I would give is to please make sure that you address that specifically to the institution or institutions you're wanting to hear from. That way you get the most accurate and detailed information on those questions. Questions. Your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. So using that Q&A function is going to be the way for you to communicate with us during this presentation. There will be another hour of presentations happening right after this. So please feel free to sign up for those. And then also we will have these recordings available for this session as well as all sessions taking place today at strivescan.com slash RAC, R-A-C-C, within about a week or so. So now looking at our um, presentation group, this evening, you have some wonderful institutions you're going to hear from. We are in session B4, so you have five great institutions, and we are going to now turn it over to Purdue University. All right, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and get started. There we go. So hi, hello, my name is Sarah and I obviously work for Purdue University. I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So if we have any Northern Californians in the house here, Hi, hello, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you might have. Um, but a little bit about Purdue, we are a large institution. So we have about 35,000 undergraduate students and growing. But the nice thing is we have plenty of professors on staff to really support our students. So our student to teacher ratio is only 13 to one and our average class size is still about 30 students. So pretty similar to what you're used to now in high school. But with our, um, our student body, it's an incredibly diverse campus. We kind of bring the world to this melting pot of a university in the heart of the Midwest. So we have students from all 50 states plus over 120 other different countries as well. But beyond that too, there are plenty of opportunities for you guys to get out and study abroad and experience the world as well, even though we bring the world to you right here on campus. With our location, we are in a traditional college town, about an hour from Indianapolis and about two hours from Chicago. There's plenty of things going on throughout the year, like concerts, comedians, Broadway shows, music and arts festivals, farmers markets, anything you can think of. We do have all four seasons. So it's a common question that I get from at least my Bay Area students. Um, so we do get all four seasons and I will tell you fall is hands down, my favorite time of year to be at Purdue because it just gives you that quintessential college, homey, cozy feel in the fall and the leaves are all changing, that, that uh, crisp autumn weather, things like that. Even though we are in a college town, it's super easy to hop in a get around or zip car, pop up to Chicago, enjoy some deep dish pizza, or maybe down to Indianapolis, walk around the canal, enjoy the museums and art scene down there. We do, oh, one thing I wanted to mention with location, we do have shuttles that take students from California. Obviously, you're going to be flying to campus. So when you arrive to those airports, we have shuttles that go from Chicago here and Indianapolis International to campus. So transportation is super, super easy getting back and forth between California and campus. Now I wanna give you guys an opportunity to get to know some of our students that we have at Purdue. So on the far left there is Alexis Roberts. She actually is one of our students in biology in one of our nine different bio majors. She is actually getting involved in some research studying jaw bio biomechanics of sculpins which are essentially a type of fish that you see in the tank there. But one of the unique things about her research opportunity is that she was able to double dip doing a study abroad opportunity in addition to research. And she did her research in the Caribbean. So who wouldn't want to do that? You know, lay on the beach in the meantime, go do your research in the Caribbean. Who can complain? So in the third student from the left, there is SJ. What you can see in his hand there is actually a Tupperware 
container. So he was involved in some research branding with Tupperware um, involving smart Tupperware. So essentially this Tupperware that he helped to develop was able to tell the weight of your food, um, how perishable it is or how much longer it has to stay fresh. It can even communicate with your smart refrigerator and add it to that grocery list once it knows that it's starting to get stale or perish. So there's a ton of opportunities for our students to really kind of explore beyond the classroom, whether it's maker spaces, research, anything like that. We really want to encourage our undergrads to get involved even outside the class. Now, I often also get asked, what are opportunities for me to get hired? Jobs, internships, even interviews at least. So we have our Center for Career Opportunities, our CCO. As you can see, it's ranked number three in the country for best career services. So they help you do mock interviews, um, brush up your resume, tons of career fairs. Our largest career fair is actually the largest student-run career fair in the country called the Industrial Round Table. And for that fair alone, we bring over 400 companies from all over the world right to campus every fall to hire our students. So anything you can think of from Facebook to Google, Lockheed Martin, NASA, Walt Disney Company, Goldman Sachs, you name it. It's a huge, huge opportunity just even for that fair alone for students to network, get their resume out there and secure those jobs and internships. We do have tons of opportunities for students to get involved, again, beyond research and academics or the fun side of campus. We have close to a thousand student clubs and organizations, whether it's a huge Greek community, bands, orchestras, and choirs, more philanthropic based organizations. So I promise you, no matter what you guys are interested in, it's super, super easy to kind of find your people, find your community at Purdue. The other thing that I wanted to mention is in regards to applying to Purdue, when you apply to Purdue, you do have to apply to one of our 200 plus majors that we offer. That's a nice thing about being such a large institution is that we have a lot of majors to choose from. Our most popular majors are going to be engineering, computer science, business, nursing, which is a direct admit program, and professional flight. With our actual application review, it is holistic. That basically means we do look at everything on your application to make a decision. A common question we, especially this past year, have been getting a lot is regards to our test policy. So if I have any rising seniors, next year, next admission cycle, we will be test flexible. So essentially that means if you have a test score, great. We would love to see it. If not, that's okay. You're still competitive for admissions, scholarships, honors college, everything like that. So don't stress if you aren't able to register or secure that test date. If it keeps getting canceled over the course of the year, you'll still be able to apply and be competitive for admission. But again, our preference is that obviously the ideally students do still have that SAT or ACT score to provide. Now, one of the last slides I want to leave you here with is the money slide. So if I have any parents here, this is probably the slide you're most interested in. The main thing I want to point out here on this slide, though, is our frozen tuition. We've had 10 consecutive years of frozen tuition. So essentially, that means we've not had a single tuition hike since 2012. In fact, we've reduced the cost of room and board on top of that since 2012. So it's cheaper for students to attend Purdue now than it was when I graduated, believe it or not. So please don't do the math, figure out how old I am. But that just really drives home the value and um, mission that we have here at Purdue to reduce student loan debt. So thank you guys so much for joining us here this evening. I will include my contact information in the chat and I think we'll move on to Aaron from Iowa. Yes, absolutely. And before we do, just a quick reminder um, to those joining, please utilize that Q&A function if you have any questions to give our reps plenty of time uh, to answer any of those questions that you have. And we are now going to hear from the University of Iowa. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for the introduction. Good evening. My name is Erin Monroe. I am the Associate Director, or sorry, Assistant Director of Admission with the University of Iowa. I'm a proud alum and regionally located in Southern California and work with students coming from all over the West Coast. 
I'm excited to share with you tonight a little bit about what it means to be a Hawkeye and what joining our community and Hawkeye family is like. So the University of Iowa is located in Iowa City. We are over on the eastern side of the state, just 20 minutes away from the nearest airport, which is in Cedar Rapids. We're a large public Big Ten institution, just like Purdue. And our home is a unique blend of both high art and small city where town and campus come together to make one of America's definitive college towns. So pictured here, you kind of get a Hawkeye view of what our campus looks like. Um, the west side of campus, which is beyond the Iowa River, if you look closely, you can see that peeking through the photograph. That's primarily home to the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, which is one of the largest teaching hospitals in the nation. Our graduate studies are over on the west side and also our athletic events and opportunities. So if you wanna cheer on the Hawkeyes in football, wrestling, basketball, volleyball, you name some time over there. But a student's day-to-day -day campus life is gonna be located within about a five to 10 minute walking distance of the building with the gold dome in the center of this photograph. That's the old Capitol building. It's the original capital of the state of Iowa before it moved to Des Moines and really the center point and heart of our campus. It's home to festivals year round. Students are constantly passing through this area. It's our most Instagrammed area of campus. So a great place for students to hang out and see familiar faces. What's not pictured in this photograph is the city that our students are connected to and really what makes living in Iowa City and being a student at the University of Iowa feel like their home and that's downtown Iowa City. Downtown is home to more than 100 different businesses, restaurants, shops. It's a great place for festivals and food, film, fashion and art year round. It's a UNESCO city of literature. So there's something constantly going on in this downtown area. Most of the businesses are local and alumni owned, but in the downtown area, we do have a Target, there is a Starbucks, there's a Chipotle. So anything that you can think of really needing for survival, you're able to find just right across the street. On our campus, we have about 31,000 students in total, a large out-of-state population. California is our fifth most populous state represented at the University of Iowa, so you're not alone if you do attend. And our average GPA for our admitted first year class is about a 3.78. At the University of Iowa, we offer over 200 different areas of study. Our physics department has played a foundational role in early US space exploration and makes key contributions to NASA missions. We offer a world-class medical school and enriching experiences in the health sciences. So if you're interested in pre-med, pre-PT, biomedical engineering, health and human physiology, there's great opportunities for you. We're the birthplace of the Master of Fine Arts in English and Creative Writing and home to one of the world's top English and Creative Writing programs. And so our interests really span a lot of different opportunities for students. Some of our most popular majors for incoming first year students are business, coming in as an open major, engineering, psychology, and nursing. To apply to the University of Iowa, we will be test flexible for students applying for fall 2022. Um, we are encouraging students to apply for admission with or without a test score, but if you do have the opportunity to take an ACT or an SAT in the future, we would love for you to submit that score to us before April 1st of 2022. We're moving to an early action deadline of November 1st. We will still make admission decisions on a rolling basis. And after you apply for admission, you'll hear back within about two weeks. Students can apply to us on the Common App, the Coalition application, or we have our own institutional application as well. If you do have a test score, we would utilize the RAI formula that's listed here on the screen. That's an equation made up of your GPA, your test score, and the number of core classes that you've taken in high school. If all of that adds up to be a 255, you're automatically admissible into the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We offer direct admission opportunities into the Tippie College of Business, the College of Engineering, College of Nursing, College of Public Health, and the College of Education. If you're interested in any of those opportunities, please put a question in the Q&A and be happy to expand on the specific requirements for those programs. At Iowa, with your application for admission, you are also automatically considered for merit scholarships. For non-residents, those scholarships range from about two to $12,000, and we also have California-specific scholarships. On our campus, collaboration over competition really defines our academic culture. We have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. 
33% of our student population participates in research each semester. And so there's a lot of opportunities to innovate and inspire both in your classroom and outside of the classroom. We have over 500 different student organizations on our campus, ranging from fraternity and sorority life, multicultural and faith-based organizations, things that are geared towards networking and professional development, but then also just those pure fun interest-based organizations. We're a community that's rich in pride, spirit, and tradition coming both from the arts, where Hancher Auditorium hosts our professional side of the arts with Broadway performances and lectures from all over the world coming to the University of Iowa. We are spirited in supporting our Hawkeyes on the field, on the court, and in the classroom with 24 teams that participate and compete within Big Ten Division I athletics. Pictured here is Kinnick Stadium, and we are home to one of the best traditions in college athletics, where all of our fans, after the very first quarter of our home football games, stop what they're doing and wave to the kiddos in the Children's Hospital, which is just right across the street from Kinnick Stadium. If you're interested in learning more about joining our Hawkeye community, I'd love to connect with you. I'll provide my contact information in the chat, but I will pass things back over to our next presenter. Thank you so much to the University of Iowa for their time. And again, um, we are getting some questions coming in, which is fantastic. Please feel free to continue sending those. And also some of our reps are going to be sending out links and contact information within the chat feature. So make sure that you check that out as well. Uh, moving right along, we are now going to hear from Muhlenberg University, or excuse me, college. Thanks so much, James. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Becca Larson. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Muhlenberg College for the West Coast. Um, I'm excited to share a little bit more about Muhlenberg with you. So we are a small liberal arts college located in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is about 60 miles from Philadelphia and 90 miles from New York City. It's quite easy for students to get to campus coming from California. You can fly into Newark or Philadelphia Airport, both of which are about an hour and 10 minutes from campus or you can fly directly, or you can fly into the Allentown Airport, which requires a connecting flight that's only about a 10 minute drive from campus. So pretty easy to get to um, Allentown from California. Allentown is the third largest city in Pennsylvania, and it's situated within the Lehigh Valley, which is rated in the top five for economic development within the US. So while our campus is in a more suburban part of the city of Allentown, just a couple of miles away, you have downtown Allentown, which has a ton of opportunities, great eateries, culture, performances, lots going on in Allentown. And we're part of a consortium of colleges is situated within the Lehigh Valley where students are able to cross register and take advantage of opportunities happening not only on our campus but on those campuses within the consortium as well. At Muhlenberg, we enroll just under 2,000 students, so we're on the smaller side. 91% of students live on campus with guaranteed housing all four years. We're a school that's known for its deep sense of community. We've been called consistently the caring college over the years. If you look behind me, you'll see a red door. Um, Every single door on campus at Muhlenberg is red, which is a Lutheran sign of welcoming. So you'll, it's not uncommon for you to be walking around campus and see students, faculty, staff, really anyone on campus holding doors open for one another. And again, I think that speaks to our deep sense of community at Muhlenberg. Another thing that we really value is tasty food. We've been consistently ranked in the top 20 in the nation for best campus food and number one in the state of Pennsylvania. So it's a big point of pride for us. Try the whoopie pies when you're on campus. That's a bit of a Pennsylvania delicacy. Um, at Muhlenberg, we're a division three school uh, we have 22 different um, varsity athletics, including football. Our football team made it to the final four in D3 championships in 2019. And although our 2020 season was sadly canceled, we're just putting all of that energy right into the 2021 season. So stay tuned for updates on, uh, on how we do next fall. Academically, Muhlenberg offers just under 40 majors, but there's a lot of academic breadth within that. We're a school that's a great option for someone who's undecided. Most of our students come in undecided and you have until the end of sophomore year to declare a major. About a third of students at Muhlenberg double major and another third pursue a major and a minor. So if you have multiple areas of academic interest, we're a great fit for you. Um, some of the programs we're more well known for, we have a spectacular program within theater um, and dance. And we do have a concentration in musical theater within our theater major. All of our majors are non-audition based, although we do offer auditions for talent-based grants. And all of our productions and arts courses are open to students um, who are non-majors as well. So if you want the arts to be a big part of your life, but you want to study something like neuroscience, um, you can absolutely do that at Muhlenberg. Beyond our strength within the arts, we have a spectacular pre-med program with about an 87% admit rate into US
Midwest Medical Schools um, for our students. We have partnerships with several of the local hospitals for both clinical and research opportunities. So lots of hands-on learning happening at Muhlenberg. Beyond our strength within the sciences, we have majors in business, accounting, economics, finance, media and communications, newer majors in neuroscience, and our newest majors in sustainability studies. So like I said, there's a lot of academic breadth and opportunities for students to study across different academic disciplines. We also offer a range of academic partnerships to help students as they move forward with their graduate um, level learning. So we have a three plus four program in dentistry with the University of Pennsylvania, three plus four program in optometry with SUNY College of Optometry. We have two early assurance medical school programs with Boston University and Temple University School of Medicine respectively. Most of these programs um, you don't have to apply to when you're applying for admission. Um, you apply once you are on campus. The only exceptions are the um, optometry program and the um, dentistry program. Our newest academic partnership is the three plus three program in partnership with Villanova University School of Law. And hot off the press, we just announced that we'll be offering a four plus one program in applied analytics analytics through our graduate division at Muhlenberg. So we really want to help students not only, um, you know, do well academically in their undergraduate degree, but also help propel them forward for graduate study. And beyond graduate study, we're also quite proud of our outcomes. We have a spectacular alumni network at Muhlenberg that really helps support students in finding internships and job opportunities, not only within the city of Allentown while they are on campus, but also if you come back to California for the summer, we'll help pair you with an internship um, close to home. We also really take advantage of our proximity to New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, DC. So the Career Center sponsors a series of what we call career road trips, where you'll, we'll take you to one of those cities for the day. You'll do a bunch of site visits, interviews, um, really start to network. And so it's a great way to kind of kick off um, your job search process or connect um, with a different uh, industry for an internship. So the Career Center is a really great resource for students. In terms of the admission process, we are a test optional school. We've been test optional since 1996. So before most of you were born, um, we were already test optional. So our admission process hasn't changed significantly um, as a result of the inability that, uh, for, of students to test um, or a common application exclusive school. So it's the only way to apply to Muhlenberg. So you just fill out that common application. We don't have a supplement anymore. So a little bit less writing for you, um, but we really do value the opportunity to get to know you at Muhlenberg. So we encourage you to schedule um, an interview you find ways to connect with us. Being here tonight is a great first step, um, but we really do love that opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out. We've already started um, conducting our junior interviews and we'll continue to do interviews through um, January of your senior year. Um, in terms of financial aid, we require only the FAFSA. We automatically consider students for merit-based scholarships when they're applying for admission. If you'd like to apply for talent-based grants, you can learn more about that on our website. Just a couple of updates um, about what's going on on campus. We recently broke, broke ground on a brand new building that will house um, our Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. It will also be the new home to the Muhlenberg Center for Public Opinion, um, which is our on-campus polling center, political polling center. Um, it received an A-plus rating from Nate Silver's 530 and there's a lot of really important political research happening there. It's an exciting place um, you know, to be able to do political research in a battleground state. It's something our students really um, love to take advantage of. Um, beyond that, we're also making some updates to our Seegers Union, our student center. So lots of um, new updates happening on campus. And I'll leave you all with a fun fact. As part of our theater program, we have a six um, sequence course in stage combat. One of those courses within the six is in swashbuckling, which is single sword fighting like a pirate. So if you have any questions about Muhlenberg, you can go ahead and pop those into the chat. But thanks so much for joining us tonight, friends. All right, wonderful. And students joining, just as a reminder, we only have two more presentations to go. So make sure you keep sending in those questions to give our representatives plenty of time to assist you with any of your individualized questions. We are now going to hear from High Point University. Sorry about that, my audio is muted. Um, but thank you guys for the introduction. I wanna first um, start off by introducing myself. My name is Gabby Tobias. I'm one of three senior regional admissions counselors located on the West Coast for High Point. Um, I work with students in the greater LA area and I look forward to working with hopefully some of you guys soon in the near future. High Point University, we are located in central North Carolina in the town of High Point. Um, and so we have three local airports where it's really easy to get to and from all of our major cities. So we have Raleigh, 
Greensboro and Charlotte. So it's about an hour and a half from Raleigh and Charlotte and about 15 or so minutes from Greensboro Airport as well. So really central location to get and go anywhere. At High Point, we always say every student receives an extraordinary education in an inspiring environment with caring people. And what that means is we truly focus on a holistic education on our campus. Yes, uh, education inside the classroom is important, but we wanna make sure that you're getting that education outside the classroom. But it does start within our classroom. And so we begin what we believe in a world-class education. Um, so we are a smaller university. So with that comes a smaller class sizes. So we have an average class size of 17 with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. This is really similar to some of the classes that you guys are facing in high school, which is going to be easier transition. But 100% of our classes are taught by our faculty. So we don't have any teacher assistants or TAs. We truly want to make sure that you're getting the information from our world class faculty and that you're learning from professors who have experience in the field. Most of our professors do have terminal degrees, and if they don't, we have what they call a degree in experience. So you're learning from businessmen who've had 10 to plus years of experience in the business world who have gone on and they've been successful as well, too. Um, we also have a four year um, graduation guarantee. We want to ensure that we're getting you inside and outside of High Point within four years. And we do this by making sure that we're ensuring mentorship on our campus. Um, so you hear a little bit more about that a little bit later, but beginning at High Point, you're going to have what's called a freshman success coach. So it's going to be somebody that's going to help you transition from your high school year, college years a little bit more smoothly. So it's going to be somebody who's a free academic advisor you're going to work with. You're going to meet with them on a monthly basis and you can go grab a drink at Starbucks with them or just kind of hang out in their office. It doesn't have to be just so formal. But we do this to ensure that you have somebody on your campus prior to being moved to academic advisor who's going to be there and who's going to be kind of somebody you can keep in your back pocket, comparing your schedule correctly or making sure that you're getting involved in clubs and organizations, um, anything that you want to be in from career and professional development to internship office, we want to make sure that you're getting that access to that as well. Um, we also have a tuition free fifth year master's. And so you're essentially getting a $40,000 product for free. So you can stay for a free fifth year master's at the end of your senior year, stay one extra year, and you're graduating with two degrees from High Point. So if you have any additional questions about that, let me know and I'm happy to talk about it. And lastly, I wanna to really touch on our product discovery. And so we encourage students at High Point to come in undeclared. It's okay to not know what you wanna do at the age of 17 and 18 years old. And we really wanna help you get to that pathway where you can really find your major and find that academic passion and that career passion. And so we do this by making sure that you have a freshman success coach throughout your first year and your second year, and you have the end of your sophomore year to declare your major. So you have a little bit of time to declare that major, and you have a little bit of time to decide what's going to be something that you can utilize throughout your four years at High Point. And we want to make sure that we're ensuring growth in our students outside the classroom. So this is why experiential learning in every major is important to us. So research and hands-on learning isn't just designated towards science majors. We want to ensure that every major gets the opportunity to learn by doing. Um, so 25% of all your education at High Point is experiential. So if some of you guys are familiar with the popular show Shark Tank, we actually have a, um, a show. We actually have a show like that on our campus, or not a show, but we actually have a business pitch competition like that on our campus, um, where our students can actually enter in towards our business pitch competition. Um, they can come up with a different business idea or a product they want to sell. And if they actually win, they get up to $10,000 towards that product. So first, second, and third place get some sort of money or some sort of investment through that project. So that's just another example of making sure that we're investing back in our students and that every student gets an opportunity for experiential learning. And then we do also have a guaranteed internship program on our campus. At least most of our students at High Point do an internship. So whether that's on our campus or all the way out in LA or the Bay Area, we have students who go all over and we even have students who've gone internationally as well to do internships. So experiential learning is important in every major. And then probably one of our unique selling points is our four-year development of life skills. And you guys are probably wondering what in the world is life skills? Um, but when you're graduating college, employers are looking for employees who are coachable, who are able to adapt to different learning environments, who are able to effectively balance their money, their energy, their time, and their finance. And so at 
care of all of these things on our campus. And so we have learning labs all across our campus that are gonna help our students with these specific skills. And one of our big claim to fame is our 1924 Prime Steakhouse. So it's an example of a learning lab. Um, it is a steakhouse on our campus, so it is included in your meal plan. So you can go and get a free steak or a filet mignon or a vegan or vegetarian option of your choice. But all the waiters and waitresses that you see on our screen here go around and teach our students different etiquette skills. Now, you may be wondering why is this important, um, but when you go out into the job world, you may be interviewing a client over a lunch or a dinner, or you may be doing an interview yourself over a lunch and dinner. And you need to make sure that you know how to conduct yourself you know how to be in that setting or in that environment. We even bring in Brooks Brothers to teach our students to dress successfully no matter what interview or what location they wanna go into for that interview. But it's just a simple example of one of our many learning labs on our campus. And lastly, we are a school that models values and builds characters. We wanna make sure that our students are immersed in an environment that's inspirational. And so our students at High Point donated over 100,000 plus community service hours and over $1 million towards charity each year. We care about our models and our character at High Point. We wanna make sure that every student is building those as well. And real quickly, I wanna to touch on our vibrant student life. We have about 80% of our students who come from outside of North Carolina. And so all of our California students will be welcomed with open arms. Um, we have 16 NCAA Division I teams and over 200 plus campus and club and organizations to get involved. Here are some of our application deadlines as well. We do have an early decision of November 1st, an early action of November 15th, um, and then a regular decision of March 1st. We are test optional. We've been test optional for about a few years. So this is nothing that's new to us, and we're very used to reviewing these application plans under those metrics. Um, and if you want any questions about what application plan may be the best for you, please feel free to reach out to me or your admissions counselor. And lastly, here are some next steps as well too. Um, we offer on-campus tours, but we do have some virtual options as well too, if you guys are interested. Um, and here's my contact information if you guys wanna take a quick screenshot. I'm one of our senior counselors and I'm happy to direct you to who your admissions counselor may be as well. Thank you guys for joining and I will pass it on to the next person. Wonderful, thank you so much to High Point University. And we have just one more presentation to go, so make sure you get those questions in. And last, but certainly not least, we are now going to hear from the University of Oklahoma. Thanks so much. My name is Amanda Marsh. I am with the University of Oklahoma. I am based in San Diego, and I also attended OU from out of state. I've been doing this for about a decade now, and I just wanna congratulate you on taking this step in expanding your college search. I'll tell you that every time I do one of these with my colleagues, even though I've known some of them for many years, I learned something new and wonderful about their institution. So you're hearing from a lot of great people, which is wonderful. The number one question that I get in my line of work is why OU? I also have a lot of people asking me, where is Oklahoma? That's one of my favorites. I think we're struggling in geography. We are that hat that sits on top of Texas. And if you know anything about college football rivalries, you'll now know that Oklahoma is always on top of Texas. So that is where we are. At OU, we are 44% non-resident. So just about every other person you're meeting is coming from out of state, just like I was. This year, we received more West Coast applications. We had more West Coast admits, and we already have more West Coast, West Coast easy for me to say, commits than ever before. So why OU? Why is California the second largest out-of-state area for our students? I'm going to give you a few reasons why that is. The number one reason for why OU is our campus itself. It's considered one of the most beautiful campuses in the United States. It's always in one of those top 25 rankings. And while I don't give too much clout to rankings out there, I always think that's a really nice one to have. Norman itself is very much a traditional college town. It's about 15 minutes to walk from one end of our campus to the other. Cars don't go through it. They have to go around it. It is a residential college town. So students are moving there to go to college, not doing the commuter campus, like some of our campuses out here in California. We're a really comfortable size at 22,000 undergraduates. Only 4% of your classes ever have more than 100 students in them. So while we are considered a large public, we feel a little bit smaller than that, which is really nice. Coming from high school, I never felt overwhelmed at OU. When I first started working for us and they said that there were 22,000 of us, I thought, well, where are they? And then you go into our stadium on game day and you quickly find, oh yeah, this actually is a big school. One of the great things about OU is that it is suburban. 
a lot of times when people say traditional college town, it can be a little bit harder to get to. We are just 25 minutes away from the state capital of Oklahoma City. So you have the airport access, you have the internship access, the job placement access. You also have the NBA, all the major concerts coming through. You're gonna have the zoo, the botanical gardens. That big city life is right there for you when you want it, but then Norman's very much your traditional college town, which is really nice. The YOU, of course, we're going to school to get a degree. So academics is gonna be a big thing that you're looking for. The National Weather Center is right on our campus. If you wanna study storms, you have to come to a place that has severe weather and we have that for you in Oklahoma. Don't worry, parents, it's not Kansas, so you're not gonna end up in Oz. Um, actually, OU has never been directly impacted by a tornado, but we sure do know how to study them. We are also one of a handful of complete health science centers in the nation. So anything you wanna study in the health sciences, we will have on our campus. Everything from nursing, PT, OT, farm, med, dent, we've got it all on our campus. We also have 18 different specialties of engineering. So everything from aerospace on down to petroleum we'll have on our campus with our own biomedical school as well. The only students who need to declare a major coming into OU are gonna be our aviation flying option, as well as our students who are going into the performing arts. So ballet, performance, modern, musical theater, theater, those students need to go ahead and decide their major ahead of time. Everyone else, whether you put undecided, underwater basket weaving, petroleum engineering, you're actually gonna be coming into what we call university college, which is our freshman college. And you'll declare your major after your freshman year. We do this because we actually know that 70% of you are gonna change your mind at least once throughout your freshman year, and it won't slow you down at all. It will still be a four-year degree at OU, which is really nice. We have an umbrella honors college. You can either apply to it when you're applying to the university, or you can apply to it after your first semester at OU. One of the coolest things that our honor students get to do is an honors at Oxford summer program. So you get to go across the pond and study at Oxford. We have a November 1 early action deadline. It is most important for our aviation flying students and then our students who are declaring majors in the performing arts adhere to that November 1st deadline. Other students who really wanna pay attention to that are if you are wanting our pre-law, pre-med or pre-pharmacy programs with guaranteed entry to the OU School of Farm, Law or Med. If you want any of those highly selective programs, please be sure to adhere to that November 1st deadline. December 15th is our final scholarship deadline. We're on the Common App, the Coalition, and we have our own OU app. I don't care which way you apply, as long as you do it by December 15th, because I want to give you money to come to OU, which we'll talk about in just a minute. We will be test optional for the next five years, which is code four. We're probably never going back to using test scores, but I don't want to say never because I never thought we'd be doing virtual college fairs, and here we are. If you are testing, we will take your self-reported test scores when you're applying and be able to admit and give scholarships based on that. And we will use super scores. All right, study abroad. Not everyone who listens to me talk is gonna end up going to Oklahoma. I know that in my heart of hearts, it does break my heart, but we can't all be perfect and that's a-okay. Wherever you do end up going to school, please look into their study abroad programs. I think my colleagues would agree with me on that. It is the cheapest way to get overseas. It's really fun to get an A for being on vacation. Exploring the world is incredibly important. If you haven't noticed in the past year, the world is actually pretty small and what happens across the globe really impacts what's happening here. It is going to be more important than ever as you're looking for a job that employers know you have that global perspective. At OU, 40% of our students are studying abroad. It does not cost any more to be abroad than it costs to be in Norman, Oklahoma, except for paying for that flight over there. So your tuition and fees are the same, your scholarships and financial aid travel with you. We do have our own two campuses that are in Italy and Mexico, and then exchange agreements that we can get you to 200 different universities, 80 different countries, so anywhere you wanna go for two weeks over winter break, a summer abroad, a semester abroad, or a full year abroad. We wanna get you out there to see the world as well. All right, my final YOUs, cost. Total cost of attendance at OU. Yes, you are a non-resident coming from California, but total cost of attendance, you're living in Norman, Oklahoma, not Santa Barbara. So our total cost is gonna be right in line with what you pay for a UC system out here. The great thing is we do not have impacted programs. We get you in and out in four years and we give you scholarship to do it. Right around 80% of my California students are receiving an automatic scholarship to attend based on their academic awards. So a merit scholarship without even considering financial need. We do a flat rate tuition, so students are always paying for 30 credit hours a year, 15 credit hours a semester, but you can take up to 18, so you'll get those three credit hours for free that you have included in that cost right there. We do this because we know you need to take 15 credit hours per semester to graduate on time. 
And I've said a lot of reasons why students pick OU. I'll also go ahead and acknowledge the real reason that a lot of students pick us, including one of my brothers, is that we are a big football school and they really want that big school spirit and that big atmosphere. But when it comes to athletics, we're not just a football school. This year we had 10 programs ranking in the top 10 at the same time. So everything from women's softball, men's and women's gymnastics, tennis, golf, women's basketball, we've got it all right on our campus there for you. So if you're looking for that big school spirit, we definitely supply it. Um, I always say the number one reason I chose OU is because I really like winning and I'm not ashamed of that. I'm a highly competitive per person. Also our student life. We have one of the largest Greek systems in the nation with over 25% of our students participating across five different Greek councils. If you don't wanna be involved in Greek life, that's great. Both my brothers also attended OU from out of state and neither of them went Greek and they still loved their experience. There's 500 other organizations to be involved in that have nothing to do with Greek life. Some of our larger ones have to do with raising money for our children's hospital up in Oklahoma City, which is our dance marathon, going to the Children's Miracle Network, um, and then our Really for Life, raising money for cancer research as well. I think that's just about it for me today. I thank you so much for joining us. I'll leave my slide up for a minute longer if you wanna scan our QR code. And I'd love to talk to you about why OU might be a great fit for your college search. Thanks so much for your time and back to James. Thank you so much to the University of Oklahoma and to all of our institutions um, for that wonderful information. I wanna invite everybody to turn their videos back on. And um, I wanna give you guys just a little bit of time to talk a little bit more about your institution. So um, the question I'm gonna ask is, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? It might be something that you wanna expand on that you talked about before or just something else. And we will answer that in the same order um, that we did our original presentation. So we will start off by hearing back from Purdue University. So I would say one of my favorite Purdue traditions, and I forgot to mention earlier that um, I am an alum. So one of my favorite traditions from when I was a student is our Grand Prix race. It's every April and it's a go-kart race. So it's kind of like the Indy 500 is the greatest spectacle in racing. Well, our Grand Prix race has been dubbed the greatest spectacle in college racing. We do have our own go-kart track on the north side of campus and there's a week full of events leading up to the race, like free outdoor concerts, tons of food vendors, you name it tons of things to lead up to that go-kart race that we have that Saturday in April. So it's definitely a huge tradition, a part of the fabric of our culture. At Iowa, um, one of my favorite traditions is the Iowa Wave where we do with the Children's Hospital right across from the football stadium after the first quarter of all of our home games. Really shows how our campus and community is connected. But one of the traditions that happens more frequently on our campus is that there is a sculpture that is shaped um, to be very artistic, but our students have lovingly named it the brain rock. And every time you go to take a test or turn in a paper, you're supposed to walk by this sculpture on campus, put your hand on the brain rock to help you get a good grade. <laughs> um, so that's a very frequented area of our campus. It's hard to pick one favorite tradition at Muhlenberg, but since we're getting close to finals, I'll share something that happens at the end of each semester, um, which is the midnight breakfast, which happens in our dining hall. Um, you know, just a, a nice time for students to kind of de-stress, enjoy a meal and community with one another. And our faculty and staff um, often volunteer their time and they serve the meal within the dining hall, um, which our students absolutely love. And then beyond that, um, we have a a scream in the library that happens during finals where everyone just takes kind of 60 seconds and just lets out all of that, that stress that they have during finals. And I know it's something that students look forward to, uh, maybe not their ears so much, but I think it's a good way to de-stress um, leading into exams. Yeah, I think one of my favorite traditions at High Point is move-in and welcome week for our students. Um, it truly is an awesome experience. One, just seeing all the students that you've worked with actually be enrolled and be on campus. Um, but two, just because it's a community atmosphere. So we bring out cowbells, which is a very Southern thing, but we do have them. Um, and everybody's dressed to the nines and the tens in their High Point gear, but everybody in the community is out welcoming all of our current students. 
and they're bringing them in. And then the first week of classes, um, we do have fairs and things like that that students can get involved in. Um, but we do have kind of a little get together where our students will come to campus. They'll have like bouncy houses, corn on the cob, food trucks, all that kind of good stuff. So it truly is kind of like a full on celebration for all of our students. And I just love seeing all of our current students excited to be on campus um, and move in. So that's definitely one of my favorite traditions. All right, at the University of Oklahoma, my favorite thing is that if you yell boomer at somebody, which has nothing to do with the term OK boomer that y'all came up with, um, if someone yells boomer, you yell back sooner. Um, and the Sooners is our mascot. And what's most ironic is saying boomer sooner is that they are actually groups of people who hated each other historically, because when Oklahoma became territory to move on to, and that's a whole another story for a different day for your history teacher version of Mrs. Marsh. Um, but the boomers were the people who entered legally first when it became territory to be settled. And the Sooners were people who got there sooner. So that's quite literally what it means is that they were opportunistic and they very literally jumped the gun and got there before they were supposed to. So the boomers and Sooners hated each other, but that's what we yell at each other. So if you ever see OU gear, you can yell boomer. Fantastic. Thank you so much for just the added um, insight, wisdom, and information on your campuses. And thank you so much to everybody for joining us. Um, this has been really informative. And just a few little things as we wrap up. As you exit the webinar, there's going to be just a really brief survey. So if you would not mind doing that, it should take just a few seconds. And it allows us to plan for these events in the future. Um, there are There's one more slate of sessions happening over the next hour. So you can most certainly sign up for those um, if you would like to hear from any more institutions and then you also will have access to the recordings of this session as well as all of the other ones that have happened this evening by logging into strivestand.com slash rack r-a-c-c and so um, please don't hesitate to do that and again thank you so much to our colleges and universities for joining and just the wonderful insight and information and students we wish you uh, the best of luck on your college search and navigation process and we hope that everybody has a safe and wonderful evening thank you so much